This is the Quick and Escape Ultralight Titanium Wood Stove. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I do want to thank King Camp for sending out the Quick and Escape Titanium Ultralight Wood Stove so that I could share it with you. So this is the third product from the Quick and Escape company, the line of ultralight titanium gear that I've been able to test and review, and all of them sent to me by King Camp. Now, uh, I need to talk about this before we get into the review itself. When they sent this stove, uh, my first impressions were not good. I didn't like the design of the stove, and this is even before testing it. I didn't think that it had a good fit and finish. I, I honestly just didn't think it was going to work out to be a very good stove. And uh, But, you know, you have to give it a try because maybe I'd be surprised. So I did put it together, and I've had a number of fires in it. And I'll tell you, in the first fire that I had in it, I was afraid to touch the stove. I was sure it was going to fall apart. I thought the, clear, the, the tolerances were so loose on this stove that it was actually going to fall apart while fire in it. And I was really uh, ready to condemn this stove as being unsafe. However, after that first burn, and you'll see this when I assemble it for you uh, in, in a moment, the the side walls actually took a bit of a bow, a set in them outwards from the fire. That's what led to me thinking it was going to fall apart. But in my second and subsequent fires, I turned that bow inwards, and now it fits together much better. Just the same, I'm still not sure that this is something that I can recommend. So then why am I even making this video? Well, uh, when I reached out to Cook and Escape and told them, I said, look, I don't know that I can review this because it's going to come across very negative. And they said, uh, you know, uh, we'd appreciate your opinion on this. Maybe there's room for improvement. And I thought, okay, that's not common for a lot of companies to say that they are welcoming a negative review with the intent of taking my comments and seeing if they can be applied to future production or future issues or generations of this to make it safer for you to use. Not just safer, but a better value. And I'll talk about that in a moment as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this stove apart, put it back in its case, and then I'll reassemble it for you, and I'll show you its key features as well as its go over its specifications. Then, of course, I will build a small fire in this so that I can make some coffee. All right, I put the stove back in its case so that you can see what it's like when it's all put away, how thin and small it is. And I'll take it out and put it together, and then I'll give you the specifications for it. So... Now, there are a number of components here. The first one I'm going to show you, well, skip them all out and put them on my knee here, and then I can talk about them a little bit better. Here's the last one. That's what I wanted to get out and show you first. All right, so when I got them, the all the components were hooked together with this little uh, stainless steel cable just to kind of keep them in one place. I can't imagine when I would ever need to use this, but fact that they sent it with is okay you know it's not a bad thing necessarily i'm going to back in the case so i don't lose it but here are the components so it's very much like a lot of the stove with the exception of two components i'll show you those now and then in a minute i'll show you how they operate this is the grill that you put on top of the stove it also acts as your pot stand again i'll show you in a minute i want you to take note of the corners where there are milled slots in all of the corners this is your ash pan, or more like a ground plate. And you can see it's not very dirty because, well, I'll explain why in a minute. It's something I don't see myself using, but again, we'll get to that in a moment. So I'll drop those two out of the way. After that, it's very much like a lot of the stoves. Fire grate, front panel, one of the two identical, or two, the two identical side panels, and the back panel with the Quick and Escape logo milled in there. So to put it together, fine. Now, uh, here's what I have found. I'll share this with you now. It, the, one of the questions that often comes up with small, especially titanium stoves is, will it warp? The answer is yes, it will warp. Not a lot, but it does warp. And I actually found that to a bit of an advantage. Let's see if I can show you. Can you see uh, maybe a little bit of tiny warp in there? That usually happens in the first one or two burns. If you get a lot of heat in it, then you'll get a little bit of warping. After that, they seem to not warp as much. And when I say to my advantage, this would have been the inside. So what I do afterwards is I turn them around so that the bowed side is facing in. Now, why would I do that? Because it makes them fit tighter. They're snugger at that point. So let's just do that. Now, you can see there are the usual type of a notch and groove, and you just match them up. And that's two together 
another one matched up so we've got three sides together some people will wait and put the fire the opening the feed port on last i find it's just as easy to do that now so let's see like this so i've got all four sides now fire grate has two extensions that are smaller and one that is larger and uh, well we'll show you how the works like that because if you look at the side panels the back one has the larger slot at the bottom obviously that's where the larger tab goes so let's put that in roll it up slide it over and then the last one goes together like this a little bit of flexing and this is quite flexible thing there it is all assembled and you can notice that it is kind of loose and kind of rattly I was really concerned about that when I first got it. In fact, I was pretty sure it was going to fall apart on me. In fact, it almost did fall apart on me in my first burn. But that's before it took this bowing. You can probably now see the bowing on the sides, how it bows inwards. That's how I say it works in your favor. Now, why would they design it like this to start with? It's pretty much straight up and down. But there is a slight tilt into the top. Now, here's the reason. You notice there's a second set of slots. Only on the sides not on the front or the back and i'll take that apart i'll kind of put it back together and you'll see what that's there for so it is for using with an alcohol stove so take it now the large slot is going to go to the front so it actually sits in the feed port because there is no matching slot on the back port. all right there we go so now the, the fire grate has been raised to a position where if you put a frangia stove on top, you get exactly one inch clearance to the top of the pot. So that's been that's pretty much ideal. It's close. I'd like to see it an inch and a quarter, but it still works at one inch. It'll work three quarters of an inch for that matter. And I've tried a few other uh, alcohol stoves, and they all work fairly well sitting on top of that plate. So that's what that plate is all about. All right, now. Let's just talk about these two plates. This is the ash pan, but it's an ash pan that is, um, okay, I, I don't see it as being well designed. And the reason is, as I mentioned, you see how the milled corners are, right, right angle slots? They're intended to fit onto these. So I struggled with this, and you can do it, but, uh, yeah. It was easier the first time I set it up because, of course, then I hadn't burnt it. But after it got burnt, there, it is on. So it is on the bottom. It doesn't stay there. It drops to the ground. Um, and that's the way it's designed to be. This is meant to be more of a plate put on the ground so that it catches the hot coals. And you know hot coals are going to fall through those holes. So it's not a bad concept idea, but in practicality, it's not a very good one either. Now, even if they could somehow make this, like maybe there were some uh, notches that you could slide it into and hold it up off of the ground, uh, then you wouldn't have any airflow through the bottom. So it is, in fact, intended to be laying on the ground. And I've used it, and I just don't see the point of trying to get it, work it onto those corners. So it's not a bad thing. Personally, what I'm going to do is, and I'll explain more about it in a minute, is staying home. If I ever use this out in the woods, that plate is staying home. I have other things, and we'll talk about what else you can do to put under this to make it safer for use. All right, so the other one, of course, is the grill plate slash pot stand, and that's supposed to work exactly the same way, but on top. Now, if you take your time to line it up, this is even more challenging to get lined up because, of course, with everything having warped a little bit, it's just uh, frustrating. That's what it is. Okay, I'm not even going to find it. It's more or less lined up right there. Uh, here's the thing. You could do this as you assemble the stove before you light the stove up and then you put it on top, you know, put it on before you get a fire in it because you're never going to get this on top once the fire is going. I like to have my stove open so I can feed a little bit from the top, a little bit from the side when I've got a fire going, which means I'll never be able to put this on the way it's intended to go on while it's burning. It's hard enough now. Is it on? No, it's not even, see, it's not even not there. All right, now it's all supposedly locked in. 
uh, I don't see the point of this, to be quite honest, and the fact if I want to use it as a grill plate, it works just as well if I lay it across the top. It's just not necessarily going to stay in position, but it works just as well. The only reason for using this, of course, is if you have a pot that's smaller than the diameter of this. Like a 750 milliliter pot is not going to sit on top without some way of supporting it. And this is what this is for. So it serves the purpose. Yes. Yes, I'll take this out with me for that reason. I would sooner that there was another way of doing this, something with some crossbars that didn't in place a whole lot of metal on top of the fire under your pot as a bit of a heat sink. But it works. And you can use it as a grill when it gets down to coal. So this one, yeah, I'll take out. This one, no. All right, while I have got it in position, let me give you a few specifications for it. So to start with, the weight, all in. That meant in the stop sack with the other two plates, the whole assembly is 7.9 ounces or 225 grams. If you just took the stove with just plates without the stop sack, 7 ounces or 199 grams. So that's how much the, uh, the uh, carry case weighs. Stove only, without those other two plates, 4.6 ounces, 129 grams. So now it's getting into a more reasonable weight for an ultralight stove, a titanium stove, down to 4.6 inches. But you do give up carrying those two other plates. We'll talk more about your options there. Now, the height of this stove from the ground to the top is 5.1 inches or 130 millimeters. Width cross is, and it is squared, is 3.78 inches or 96 millimeters. Burn chamber depth, not as I got it set up right now, obviously in alcohol mode, but when it's down at the bottom is... Uh, 4.1 inches, 105 millimeters, and the pot gap, as 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 I mentioned, one inch is actually not one inch for the Trangia. I had another stove that sat lower, it was one inch. For the Trangia, it's three quarters of an inch, so well under the, the sweet spot of one inch or one and a quarter inches. It still works, though, so it's not an issue, and of course, this is made from titanium. Okay, so as I mentioned when I opened up, there was a reason for me showing you the stove at all. And it had to do with the fact that I thought it was close, but not something I could necessarily recommend for a couple of reasons. One, as I mentioned, I was very concerned about the loose fit. I don't think it would take a whole lot. It's better now that it's got warp, but it wouldn't take a whole lot for it to uh, fall apart, if you will. Another thing I noticed when I first got it is the finish, the fit and finish. There were sharp edges, not cut yourself sharp, but there were, you know, it was machine cut and there was no attention to making sure that the burrs on the edges were round off. It just, you know, not a big deal. What it just shows me is that they were cutting the corners a little bit to try to get this out at a re very reasonable price. And as I mentioned already, of course, the, the fire, the grill plate and the ash pan, not well thought out in my mind, especially the ash pan. I really don't think this is something that is worth you taking with you or not at all, really. And uh, I'll show you the option in a minute. This has value, but I use it like that. Just set it across the top. It's just not worth the aggravation of trying to get it down here inside. All right, let's set it up. I'll build a small fire in it because I'm going to use the hot water to make some coffee with. And then I'll wrap this video up and talk about a few options. All right, so just before we get started, a couple of things. First off, it's uh, that we have been under a fire ban pretty much all spring. We've had not a lot of rain. It's been dry, and of course, spring is the time for fires, and uh, we've had some bad fires in this area before, so, you know, the fire ban has been on. But however, we have had some heavy rains recently, so the ban has been lifted, only last a day or two before we have and go back on again. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Just the same, I'm using this fire pit as a safe spot for using this stove, plus it does provide me wind protection because the winds have picked up a lot. So this is the thing. I mentioned the, the ash plate. This would sit on the ground. Now, if you want to take this with you and carry that little extra weight, now it is titanium, you could lay the stove on top of it, but it lays directly on the ground. So it's not as good as, a, as an ash pan that has clearance underneath it. It can still transfer heat down to the surface underneath. So here's my recommendation. Leave it home. Don't bother t taking that plate with you. It's just extra weight that's not going to do a whole lot for you. Find a safe place to set your stove up, like inside a fire pit, on mineral earth, on stone, and uh, it'll be a lot safer and lighter to take with you. Now, I do have another option I'll show with you. This is something I carry with me 
a lot of the time, especially when I'm using wood stoves, and I think you've seen it in other videos, to start with, this is a piece of aluminum roof flashing that I, I will take with me as a layer of protection. You can see how much it's been used. But this is the other thing, and I recommend these anytime. And this is a, uh, a fiberglass, not it's just fiberglass fire mat that you can purchase on Amazon. I'll probably see if I can put a link. I'm not sure I have the original link, but I will run this underneath the stove. And this is great for protecting any surface and ensuring that fires don't spread outwards. So with all that having said, let's get one started. So I do have a little bit of fat wood and other material here that I want to light to get this going. And I, I'm going to do a combination of top down, bottom up. So I'll, I'll preload it. Let's put it that way. I'm not preload it, but uh, actually load it from the top. That's what I wanted to say. Then I'll start loading it from the side after that. So a little bit of fat wood on, in on top of that. Oh, a little bit of bark laying there. I have another feather from this feather stick work that I was doing. A whole bunch of little tiny sticks all picked up off of the ground. Catching on quickly. And I'll just start feeding in some. It's dry. Look how dry that is. That's just crazy dry. So. Yeah, another day and we will be back to a fire van again. I'm going to have to wait for that fire to burn down a little bit. Because I do need to use this grate on top of the stove to support my pot. So just give me a second as the fire establishes and then I'll put the grate on top and uh, put my pot on top of that. All right, only a minute or two later, it's all it took for some of that wood to burn down. Put the grate on. You can see now why you'd never get that grate on with those edge corners, those milled 90 degree slots while the fire is burning. And you do need something though. Uh, most of that smoke, by the way, is off the bottom of my fire maple pot. It's got a lot of tires and so on. So this is my 900 milliliter pot and it's a good size pot so it's definitely bigger in diameter than the 750 milliliter pot and you can see the size of it by comparison to the stove you do need something this would not set on top without that grill that grate there uh, and the combination of the pot and the fire grate is starting to dampen things down well that's surprising how much that's causing the smoke to roll out of this Oh, here's a comment I want to make there. That's a little bit better. Here's a comment I want to make as well. Look at the size of the feed port here. A uh, couple, th uh, couple thoughts on that. First off, I'm losing heat out of the feed port because of its size. The other thing is, and I've already had this happen a couple of times, is sticks are falling out. But, uh, you know, a feed port doesn't need to be that big. In fact, I prefer to see a much smaller, smaller feed port. Yes, it helps for getting longer sticks in but it doesn't have a good effect on airflow. It's just, there's too much air. Let's put it this way. This stove is a hot stove because of the holes in the size of the fire grate, because of the opening here, you've got much more air coming into the stove than you do uh, coming out. Like there's not very much exhaust around the top. That's why you're seeing smoke. That wood is plenty dry. So any, let's just lift the pot off. There you can see. A lot of it is because of there's not quite enough airflow at the top of the stove to match the air coming in. All right, so basically, that's the stove in operation. I'm quick going to boil up some water, make myself a cup of coffee, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments for the Cook and Escape Titanium Ultralight Wood Stove. So, you know, one uh, redeeming feature of a titanium wood stove, this one or any other, is how quickly they cool down after you uh, after the fire goes out. So I was able to dump the hot coals out, dose them well. By the time I was finishing dosing the coals, this was easy enough to pick up. It's dirty, mind you, but it cooled off very, very quickly. So that is one good feature of this stove and all titanium wood stoves for that matter. Okay, a few closing comments for this stove. I'm looking at it to see if it warped any more than it had. And interestingly enough, 
It has not. It has taken that original set where uh, on the first burn it bowed outward. I've turned those sides inwards and now the, well, let's see. Can you see it's still bowing inwards? And that's pretty much what you want. That's been my experience with a few stoves now. And if it ever does bow back outward again, I'll flip the plates, clean them off, flip the plates and run it with the bow on the inside. It just makes it a little tighter. I mean, look how loose it is now. Can you imagine what it was before the bow and the set was created by the heat? So, okay, so as I opened up this video, I mentioned that I'm not happy with the stove. I don't think it's a good value as is. However, the company was interested in hearing my feedback with the suggestion that maybe they could improve this stove in later generations. So I've given you most of my thoughts on this. And uh, as it is right now, it's not worth the money. Be quite honest, it is not. If they do some improvement to it, such as they need a little bit more ventilation at the top. By the way, do you see the crenellations here? Do you know what the concept of that is? You stack all these plates together and you've got a wrench. I can't imagine what I would be taking out in the woods that would have a nut that size. Well, there's two different sizes. Actually, there's three different sizes there. But, uh, you know, if I have something that has a nut that large on it that I bring out here in the woods, I'm probably going to be bringing wrenches to deal with it if I have to loosen it off or tighten it up anyway. So it, that's just a, a, a misdirection to make you think you get a little bit more versatility out of it. And I don't like it when they do that, any manufacturer of that. It just makes the thing look like they were really stretching to find something good to say about it. Um, it does have some good redeeming features. It does work. It's a very hot burning stove. Look at all that airflow through the bottom. As long as you don't have it smothered off from the bottom, and it just needs more airflow at the top to match it, and maybe a smaller feed port on it. Well, not ma uh, maybe, uh, definitely a smaller feed port on it. And I think, and closer tolerances, so you don't get into this position where you're just a little worried about it falling apart. And here's the big one if they lower the price. Now, this is not all that expensive. I'll put the price in the notes below and you can check it on their website. I do that because Canadian prices are going to be different than American prices and I don't know what it is you're going to pay or anywhere else in the world. But I'll tell you, I did a little searching on Amazon Canada for titanium wood stoves and I found a few and a few of which I already own that I would just as soon spend the extra five or ten dollars to get and uh, yeah so this is not a good value at their current price now I think that may be one of the first things they do is drop their price on this on their website and uh, if you're okay with some of these features that I've mentioned that are less than ideal then it would become a better value for you and you can certainly play with the stoves and modify it a little bit to make it a little bit more efficient and hopefully a little bit safer at the same time. Okay, um, as I mentioned, I really don't like doing negative reviews, but I did this with the... Mosquitoes are getting to me. I did this with the intent of providing some positive criticisms that they could use for improving this stove in later generations. Now, let's open it to you. If you have any thoughts on this stove, ways it can be improved, or maybe you like it just the way it is, please put that in the comments section below. I'll put the links and the specifications in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.